And now we present to you America's quintessential iconoclastic anomaly. Wow. In talk radio, your host, Joe Cristiano. You know, this evening, I would like to touch on a few subjects that would be considered sensitive and, quite frankly, probably too sensitive for a radio talk show host to present because people might find them disturbing. They will find them disturbing because they refuse to listen. They refuse to listen because it violates a long-held belief system that they refuse to question. But before we embark on this journey, I would like, Erin, would you please make that announcement for the upcoming? Certainly. Um, I'd like to announce that the next Oklahoma Honor Flight will take place on September 18th. Um, and that there will be a send-off gathering for those um, veterans who will be going on the evening of September 17th at the Spirit Bank Event Center in Bixby at 6.30 in the evening. Um, the honor flights are actually um, provide transportation to Oklahoma veterans to Washington, D.C. to visit those memorials that are dedicated to honor their service and sacrifice. Actually, applications of more than 200 World War II veterans are on the waiting list at the moment. And the cost of these flights are borne totally by generous individuals and organizations who support the mission of Oklahoma Honor Flights. Okay. So please um, take the opportunity to look at their website for um, anyone interested in going on a, an Honor Flight these are for World War II veterans with a, uh, a party going with them to protect. And please provide a donation on, behalf, on your behalf uh, to Oklahoma Honor Flights. Okay. Is there a website or something like that? It's OklahomaHonorFlights.org. Okay. Very good. And these for the World War II veterans that are still with us, there's... Not that many, I guess most of them are in their 80s and whatever. Exactly, and, and it's to see the new World War II memorial, which has wonderful. been completed in Washington, yeah, D.C. That's wonderful. And it's wonderful that it's being done with private money, you know, from our heart to theirs, and our heart comes out to them. So, folks, please support that on September 17th at the Spirit Bank. Make an effort, please, okay? They, they truly deserve it. I guess they called them the last... The greatest, greatest generation. generation. Generation, yeah. right, yeah. yeah. It's a shame we, we don't use those terms anymore. Well, last uh, couple weeks ago, I was invited to speak to the Tulsa County Republican Men's Club. Now, typically, the Republican Party does not invite me to speak to their clubs, and, and it's quite interesting. You would think that the Republicans would, if you think about it, would have no one, uh, no one speaking but those people who but they, they disagree with. Because why have people speak who they already agree with? It's just confirming what they already know. You learn nothing. But typically, they don't do that. What they do, but they do exactly the opposite. They only invite people who they agree with so they feel good and everyone's happy. Well, the reason why I was invited was because I was to be the um, moderator for the mayoral debate. And they asked me as an adjunct to that if I would also speak to the Tulsa uh, County Republicans Men's Club. And so, of course, I, I agreed. I wasn't going to agree to one and not the other. I thought that would be, you know, quite, uh, you know, unkind of me or whatever. Um, but what's interesting is this. Uh, I really did not know what to say to the Republican Club. I'll be very honest with you. It dawned on me about one-third through the speech what I was going to say to them. And i be honest with you, I, I, God's honest truth. And it turned out to be a, a pretty powerful speech and, and something that I want to pass on to you now. What I had, I looked around to the audience and it, and it appeared to be uh, an, an elderly audience, an older audience. Now, I'm sure the average age was maybe in the, in the late 50s, but it looked as if it was like 68. You know, everyone was, seemed to be old, but they probably weren't that old. 
And what that told me is that the people who are showing up are, you know, the older generation, not, not, the, not the, uh, the, the, the last generation coming up. And there were really very, very few really young people there. And I thought to myself, I was speaking, I said, you know, I'm speaking to people whose belief systems are cast in concrete. I said, no matter what I say, they're not going to move. I mean, they're not going to change. They'll probably just get angry and disagree internally, uh, tell me thank you very much, and leave. And I would have gone absolutely nowhere. So I decided to tell them that the Republican Party, as the Democrat Party, are dying. Both parties are dying. If you look at the statistics, fewer and fewer people, on a percentage basis, are joining a party because they don't believe in the parties anymore. Now, that's probably the last time I'll use that word in that vernacular. So what I told them is that in order to save the Republican Party, they needed to shed themselves of their belief systems. Think about that. Do you think the people sitting there actually know what the Republican Party stands for? No. No, they don't. There's not a snowball chance in hell that they do. You know that and I do. But they believe. Do you think that they actually know what the uh, representatives that are Republicans that they vote for actually stand for? Of course not. But they believe. You see, it's all based on a belief system. And I told them that provided that they stick to their belief system, this party, as well as the Democrat Party, will die. Because the younger generation doesn't want to know what you believe. They could care less. And quite frankly, neither do I. I don't care what you believe. I want to know what you know. But once you, once, once you say, what do you know, you must be a critical thinker because you have to think through all, think through all of the garbage to get to a conclusion. You have to discard so much of the, the language that is used, so much of the, uh, what I call the static in, our, in what we talk about. Isn't it interesting when my father was alive, in, and I'm going back now 55 years ago or more, he, he belonged to the uh, Italian American Association. And even then, when I was a kid, I said, hey, Dad, if you want to know really what's going on, why don't you belong to the Irish American Association, the German American Association, whatever. Oh, and he got so angry. And it was that time that I just started thinking, why does my father go someplace with people who think like he does, right or wrong, you know, all think like he does, and learn nothing. What could they possibly learn if they're among themselves recirculating the same dialogue? And this, when I was young, I was thinking this way. You see, it, it's comfortable because they want to believe you know, that they are Italians, they're the best of people in the world, right? And if you ask the Irish, they say the same thing. If the Germans, the same thing. Everybody, everybody wants to believe in everything. No one knows squat. So I thought to myself, well, if you, if, you, if you really believe that the Italians are the best people in the world and you know that, well, hell, you better tell those Irish people who live two blocks down the road. They don't know that. They're walking around in ignorance and, pow, I get hit in the head. Well, you, you may be laughing at that and you may think I'm just making that up and I'm not. But you, and if you're laughing, just think. If you are a Republican, do you go to a Republican meeting? Why don't you go to a Democrat meeting? Why don't you stand up and say, excuse me, I just heard what you have to say. Let me give you the truth, because I don't believe in the Republican agenda. I know what it is, and this is what it says. And I know House Bill 1524 and exactly what it says, and this is what it intends to do. But we don't know that. We believe what a politician tells us, and then we vote for him. We don't know. No one knows. And the younger generation is tired of that. They don't give a damn what you believe. 
They don't care what you believe. They want to know. And you can't tell them that. Because as soon as you have a dialogue with a young person, you get into this left-right paradigm, as they call it. You know, makes absolutely no sense to a thinking person. A thinking human being couldn't buy that at all. Unless you were Republican. And then you go to Republican meetings. Now, the reason why they go there, because it gives them a, a comfort in knowing that the garbage that they don't understand is agreed to with several other people, and they can chow down, have a great meal, and not argue because everyone's thinking the same thing. Or, no, I should say, everyone's believing the same thing. That was my message. And you know what? It was strange. It was accepted. I didn't know it at the time, but someone told me afterwards. I was at the um, State of the State message with the 1170 KFAQ group, and someone sat by next to me who happened to be there. I won't mention any names. A very well-known person here in Tulsa. had said, love your speech. You hit, hit us right. You really hooked us in. You sucked us in. You had a lot, of, a lot of humor. And then you hit us right over the head and you were right. And I was surprised. And he says, you're absolutely right. We have to stop doing that. He says, we will die. But this program is exactly about that. This program is not taking, oh, you know, the uh, look what the Republicans did and look what the Democrats did. Because if you listen to the Republicans talk about, on Fox News, for example, what they say about Democrats, guess what? They're right. They absolutely are correct. But then when you go to MSNBC, what I listen to, because I like to listen to the other side of the story, and when they talk about the Republicans, they're not talking about the same issue. They take cherry pick another issue and guess what they're right you see and when both groups are right that makes both of them very 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 wrong because neither one of them neither one is thinking critically they're cherry picking their words their ideas um, their conclusions and it's carefully orchestrated and that's what I dislike about all of those programs. That's what I dislike about most talk show programs. That's why this program is about thinking. I don't want people to write to me and say, Joe, I really agree with you. Thank you very much. I, it's nice, but it doesn't, it doesn't do me any good and it doesn't do you any good. We have to go to break now. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. You know, whenever I approach this subject, well, people then say, well, do you believe in God? You know, and, they, and all of a sudden they bring up the God situation. Well, folks, I, I think what that does is that proves what I'm saying. You see, uh, as much as we want to say in our hearts that we know God, the answer, the truth is, is that we don't know. And that's why we believe. I don't know of one mathematician on the planet Earth ever has said, I believe one plus one equals two. I believe it. What do they say? They say we have calculated one plus one equals two. We know that to be a fact because we'd be able to prove it, <laughs> you know, mathematically or whatever. But whenever we don't know we believe. So when we, be when we hear a politician say, well, I believe this uh, program will uh, help the blah, 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 and the poor, and I believe that da, 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 what they're saying is, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And by the way, that, which I never mentioned, I haven't read the bill that's 1,200 pages long. And then we vote for the person. Well, even worse, we vote. Because we believe, here we go, we believe that that is something that we should do as a responsible citizen. We don't know. We don't know for a fact. This is what we do know, that I know, that the Declaration of Independence says when the government becomes abusive, it's time for the people to dissent. It's not the time for the people to vote them out of office. It's time for the people to dissent. Now, bring up the God issue. We don't know God. We don't know. We don't know. No one knows God. No one's ever seen him. But we believe. And there's nothing wrong with that. 
But we have to understand that there is a distinction, and I'm bringing up the God issue only because that will come up and cloud your thinking. We don't, no one actually knows. And it's wonderful that we can believe. It's good that we can believe because it makes us feel better. It's us when a time of trouble. Yeah. I think it's important that we do know certain things. And one thing that I think more and more Americans don't know is what the Declaration of Independence says and what the Constitution says, irrespective of the fact that people um, generally could read it because it's not all that long. I mean, the Constitution itself (laughs) fits in a tiny little book, and people carry it in their pockets sometimes. But no one, I mean, in general, Americans don't know what our Constitution says. How critically important is that? that, that, Very important. And I only bring up religion not to to, to, to be disrespectful towards religion, but just to make sure it is it is put on the table so we don't walk away and say, well, he didn't talk about religion. You know, I don't want to leave any stone unturned. And it's good that you believe and we believe and that's fine. But understand that there is a difference between believing and knowing. And the problem is, is if you are a Republican, you don't know what they're doing as a Republican. If I ask a Republican, tell me what a Republican is, they couldn't tell me. If I ask five Republicans or ten Republicans, what is a Republican? Yeah, yeah. In fact, you Republicans call me. Say, this is what a Republican is. If I get 10 calls, I'll bet you I get 10 different answers because that's what you believe. You don't know. Same thing with the Democrats. Same thing. Very few people can answer that question because they're relegated to believing. Now, where did all this come from? Well, you know I'm a real proponent of the government school system, as you know. You know, I rant about it. You that. love it. You love oh, it so I, I love yeah. it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wish I was still in a government school. Exactly. You know? But, you know, how horrible that is. There's no need for school, in my opinion. No need for school. All kids n- need to know is how to read, write, and some arithmetic. They can take it from there. They say, oh, then they won't be, uh, they won't know anything, they won't do anything. They won't be well well rounded. Right right now, when they get out of high school, what are they capable of doing? After 12 years of that crap, what could they do? Absolutely nothing. They're qualified for absolutely no job. Now, the sad part of that, the totally sad part of that, is that our colleges are now becoming an extension of high school. Because we believe they are getting an education. They are not getting any education whatsoever. It's big business. Yeah. They're getting debt. Yeah. And, and, and now with this Common Core, which I do not know what it all includes, and there's a lot of controversy about it, but you know if the bureaucrats in Washington developed a, a program for the children, you know it's not going to work and it probably stifle their minds and rot their brains. Because that's their history. Now, here's the intro. I was watching a program the other night, a a movie, The Dead Poets Society with Robin Williams. Oh, yeah. Great movie. Great movie. Great movie. Absolutely great movie. And, uh, you know, he talks about, when he talked about poetry, he didn't say talk about memorizing a poem. (laughs) And I can't even repeat his language because it's so eloquent about how uh, poetry opens the mind, enlightens the heart, all this other stuff. And he takes it, he he translates what these great uh, um poet said, you know, in in yesteryear and and how meaningful they were to life and how they actually represented life. It it is fast. It it, it gives you chills when you listen to this. Yeah, it does. It It does. It gives you chills, right? And what do they, what do you learn in school? You got to memorize something, right? Then regurgitate it and then forget it the nanosecond you're out of school. In other words, when you go to college, it's a time for, um, a time for you to really develop your thinking skills. Now, how many people go to college to develop their thinking skills today? No, they don't. They take sociology or whatever they take, some, you know, a, a course that, that, that gets them no job whatsoever. But how many times do you have people taking uh, theology, you know? And, and I don't mean to go be to a religious school, but you can study religions and study the good, bad, and the ugly about them. Um, and, you know, the logic behind them, how they start. You know, you, you understand it makes you think. It makes you think about uh, philosophy. Do we talk about philosophy here in America? No, that was for those old people in robes. You know, I, we don't have Togas. any thought process. Toga parties. Yeah, to- <laughs> yeah, yeah toga parties. And we, we we start talking after we're so drunk we have no idea what we're saying. Right. All right, okay, I got that, Jim. 
But it's true. We we don't do that anymore. I have people in my family that I ask basic questions to, and they look at me like this, like I'm nuts. You know, you go to school, you got a master's degree, and I ask them a question, and they they don't know, they know nothing. Commonsensical things, yeah. yeah. And they but they pass the test, and now they since they pass the test, they can get a job. See, they believe the system. Well, there is no system. Don't believe in a system that doesn't even exist. Well, I'm going to get off of that because I rant on that too long. You know, uh, I want to talk a little bit about um, uh, the, the Trayvon Martin uh, and Zimmerman trial is over. I don't want to re- rehash it, you know, and I'm tired of it. And I said I would not do this, but I, I have to read something because, you see, I come from New York where in a neighborhood that was somewhat, not fully, but somewhat integrated. I mean, there were Spaniards, there were blacks, there were whites and whatever. And believe it or not, we lived in relative harmony. And there were jobs. I mean, there were factories underneath our houses, you know, underneath the apartments. There were actually factories. I'm not kidding you. There was a, on 124th Street, there was a metal processing factory. Trucks would be coming in and out. And above was a beautiful brownstone. I mean, what harmony? You had people who lived in the neighborhood working there. There were jobs, things were being created. But the city came by, the city came by, right, and decided that they were going to knock down all these houses and build state and city subsidized housing projects with no, uh, 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 no consideration to jobs or schools or anything. And they built tons of these things. They knocked it all down, square mile, these gigantic 36, 45, you know, uh, 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 story towers. And all of a sudden, they had instant slum. They had instant gangs. Kids had no place to go, nothing to do. There was no money. Most of the people who moved in were people who couldn't get an apartment anyplace else unless they were absolutely broke or on welfare. So those people who were working moved out. They were afraid to move into those places. You see, the government created the slum, and then the government created an environment where uh, black children could not survive. So you want to know what happens? Yeah, guess what? The government's responsible for that. In my neighborhood, it was Mayor Wagner. I remember him. He actually came over our house to speak to my father. The mayor of New York came to my house to speak to my father. I have a picture of it, black and white picture of it in the living room. And that nice neighborhood, it was a real nice neighborhood, turned to instant gangland slum as soon as they built it because everyone moved out. And there were no provisions for jobs, for anything, schools or anything. And kids just hung around all day. And guess what? Only way to make money, fast money, drugs. Then you want to know why you have a drug problem. But here it is. And, and, and so we have the government that's responsible for the plight that our blacks are in right now. And any minority is in. And, but, and I want to read to you something that was written by Charles Phipps. All right. Uh, in political realities, he says, as of this writing, since January 1st, 2013, there have been 157 homicides of blacks in Chicago. Listen, 150. Listen, since January 1st, 157 homicide blacks in Chicago. Why? Why wasn't the president t- talking about that? Right. The causes of these deaths were 12 by stabbing and 145 by gunshot. By the way, Chicago, you can't own a gun. You can't go near. You can't even look. I have a picture of a gun. You get arrested, all right? But for 145 were by gunshot. 16 of them were under 18 years of age. Without lo- looking them up, uh, can you name even one of the victims? Just one. Tell me one of them. No one knows. No one talks about it. Because what that does, it's, it, 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 it really speaks poorly of our government. Now, uh, in the 115 days between Trayvon Martin's death and the verdict in George Zimmerman's trial, there were 11,000 folks, 11,106 blacks murdered by other blacks in the United States. Let me say that again. 11,106 blacks murdered by other blacks in the United States. Again, can you name one of the victims? No, you can't. I can't. So then, why does everyone in the country who doesn't live in a cave know the name Trayvon Martin? You see, we, we should be riding in the streets, not because he's innocent or guilty. I'm not going to retry that. 
but for the way we're treated as people from, by our uh, elected officials. They think, you know, they treat us like we're really stupid. And we react like we're really stupid. And we need to change that. Listen, I'm in, I lived in Harlem. Let me give you some other neighborhoods. Like I said. In the Bronx, there was a place called Fort Apache. There was a book called Fort Apache, the Bronx. You know why it was called Fort Apache? It was a police station. And they had a, ba- a, a, a barricaded. Oh, it's time to go over a hard break, right? All right, we're going to come back. I'm going to talk about Fort Apache, the Bronx. Let's go to break. I was going to talk about Fort Apache, the Bronx. I think it was a 40, was that the 41st or 43rd? 41st or 43rd precinct. And uh, that place was, this was in a black neighborhood and black and Puerto Rican neighborhood, actually. And it was so tough. Yeah, I'm going to tell him. And by the way, I have Andy Sutton on the phone. I'm going to put him on there just one second, please. And uh, everyone's bugging me. Don't bug me when I'm talking. I'll play. Don't bug me. He can hear about but, it. <laughs> he can hear me. Oh, he can? <laughs> anyway, but um, uh, it was so bad that they had to barricade the actual precinct and was barricaded. And what my point being is that if people want to put themselves in better stead in the minds of others, they have to change. The government can't do it for them. Okay? And with that, I'm going to have Andy Sutton on the phone. Let's say uh, it's a red light. He's Which, on there. He's on there. All right. Andy, are you there? Hey, Joe. Hi, Andy. Okay. Uh, Folks, this is Andy Sutton. Uh, Andy is a regular on my other program, on uh, on my internet program, on the third Wednesday evening, usually when we don't have a power outage, that is. Um, And and we talk about, he talks about economic issues and how they affect you. He's an economist and chief investment strategist for Sutton and Associates in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. He puts out also a news, uh, a, um, uh, a, a blog uh, which is fascinating. You can actually understand. He's a fabulous writer. He's a common sense guy. Oh yeah, and he puts out he he puts out uh, a, uh, um, a a letter uh, that you can get on the internet. Uh, uh, My two cents, and it talks about economic issues and how they affect you. He has to to call in because he was seething and he had a few things to say. Andy, what's <laughs> on your mind? Well, you know, you and I sent you that. Uh, email yesterday about right. this whole idea about defunding uh, the NSA. And in uh, specific, they're uh, wireless wiretapping. And, and people need to understand what, what's going on here. And, and I pay particular attention to this just because I run a website, I have a business, I've got phone lines, you know, the whole nine yards. It, this is not just phone tapping. They're not just listening to conversations or gathering data on conversations. You send a text message, you Facebook, you Twitter, you do anything at all that involves pretty much any kind of telecommunications device, and it's being grabbed. And it's warrantless, and it's totally against liberty. And and this is a point that I want to make, and the connecting dot here, if you will, is, you know, people are screaming about the economy, and they're screaming about, you know, how they're becoming more and more subservient to banks and, and all of this kind of thing. And you're not going to get any of that back when you have government that is doing what the NSA is doing, and it's unchecked. And there was a chance, at least in, in principle, uh, symbolically at least, to, to defund this. And our representatives obviously don't understand the Constitution. They don't understand what it means to be secure in your homes, your possessions, your papers, uh, Fourth Amendment. Uh, they have no problem. 205 uh, yeas for the amendment to defund, 217 again. I think there were 12 no votes. 12 That's correct, percent. yeah. So, uh, obviously, there's 217 plus 12 that couldn't bother to vote. I don't know what their problem Yeah, was. what's their problem? <laughs> yeah, we're paying you guys to do what? Fly yeah. around on debt? And then yell about global warming. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. uh, That's a good so, point. We have two, so we have 229 representatives that violated their oath to, to uphold and protect the Constitution of the United States. And there's a big problem. Well, you, you would think, what is in their minds, Andy, of, of someone who's an elected official who 
swears uh, to uphold the Constitution, and then there's a vote to fund, uh, continue to fund uh, the NSA, where they can wiretap and, and well listen in and and everything, which violates all aspects of the Constitution, and they vote, yeah, let's continue it. Sounds yeah, good, good to me. Yeah, yeah, fire it up. It's good. Keep doing it. Yeah, I mean this, this is it's outrageous. And yeah, you know, and again, my point is that people expect responsibility from government when it comes to fiscal matters. If you can't even understand, hey, you know what? It's not okay to listen to my phone call without a warrant. If you have probable cause, go to a, go to a judge, get a warrant, do what everybody else has done for how many years, and, and, and then listen away. You know, if there's probable cause that I'm doing something wrong, then go ahead and knock yourself out. If we can't even get that basic principle across to these people, how do we expect them to have a balanced budget, to act responsibly when it comes to anything else? If they can't even grasp the most basic of concepts when it comes to, you know, law, order, liberty, the Constitution, what they swore to uphold. I mean, it's ridiculous. This is a, I, and, you know, people are out there, and I can't understand how anybody can sit there and they clap like little kids and listen to this two-bit cheap show that goes on when these guys speak. It's just, it's unreal. It's un, and, you know, we're getting exactly what we deserve. Exactly, yeah. yeah. You know, I, I also heard that there was a, and I'm not sure if it's a formal or uh, informal survey uh, asking if um, the um, NSA and wiretapping and all that was uh, uh, good for America and you know made, made you more secure and do you agree with it? 62% of the people, according to this survey, thought it was a good idea and they, they should do it. And they, they appreciated the fact that the government was going that extra mile to, to, to protect their, you know, to protect them from, from all these terrorists that we see all over the place. Oh, yeah, they're everywhere. Yeah, and yeah, I, I, I just don't. Yeah, I just don't know. But you know, I think anyway, what it comes down to is that we have. Um, uh, I, I, if you look at the top, but let me let me start. You know, when I worked for a, a big multinational corporation, um, the corporation would make decisions that would were utterly stupid in our eyes. I mean, they didn't make any sense. But I soon learned. I said, you know. These and then we say, "Oh, look how stupid those guys are on head office. They don't know what's going on. They should come down here and you know and cut, sit in our shoes for a while." Then, and I thought to myself, "These guys can't be that stupid." After a while, exactly I said, "No, they true. just can't be that stupid." Yeah. And I was right because really, what happened? The reason why they were making those decisions because they were going to enact programs that were not. Uh, 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 we were not privy of. For example, the location and the 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 the, 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 the services that we provided, they were doing away with. So, it, but they didn't tell us. So everything they did seemed like they didn't understand. Well, they understood. The thing is, this thing was going bye bye. And when I finally it dawned on me, but this was before the well before the announcement. You know, I got my group together. I said, look, let's stop with this. You know, blaming these guys for being. I mean calling these guys idiots, they, they're smart. They know what's going on. It's because something else going, is going to happen. And I said, it wouldn't surprise me if this location was closed down soon. And guess what? I lost my job because there was a snitch among them. There was a stupid snitch. He thought he'd, he'd be a smart ass, and he went. He stayed, and I lost my job because of that. And yeah. you know what? And I was glad. I was really glad because I, I couldn't take it anymore. But my point being there is that it's the same thing with government. There is, there is the elite bankers, you know, who are funding everything. Then you have the corporations in, in harmony with government. And of course, where do they get their money from? You know where. And this is all done in unison. So we, when we say these, these guys in government or, or Barack Obama are, is clueless, no, no, no. They know uh, exactly yeah, what's yeah, going yeah, on. Exactly right. We don't know. We're in denial. Yeah, we, we're the ones that are saying, all right, they know something we don't know. It, you know, it, it, and, and they're not telling us we should be scared. We're in denial. Yeah, we're in, we're denial. in denial. Absolutely. And that's the problem. Yeah. Absolutely. When you start saying they're, that, we're in denial. No different than when I was working for this big multinational corporation. Exact same situation. And the thing is, we don't mean anything. 
We are just a means to the end. Channel. That's why they want our concurrence. That's why they want dumb, dumb people in school, dumb people coming out of college. They just want you to do and eventually get a job with the government so you'll be on the government dole. And if you don't do what you're told, you lose your job and your benefits, et cetera, et cetera, and it's life is over as you know it. I'm oh, sorry for right. the dialogue, right. but, you know, oh, well, hey, that's, you're right. You know, there's a lot of guys out there, economists. You know, I mean, these are top-line guys, too. You see them on television all the time, and they, they talk about how incompetent, uh, you know, Bernanke, for example, is. He's not incompetent. I mean, he gets told what to do, but these, these guys, they know exactly right. what yeah. they're doing. So those 229, you know, I don't know what the, the, the shuck and jive political games that went on behind that. You know, sometimes they'll set it up, so, well, we know this bill's not going anywhere, so we'll give these guys that are having them, you know, they have a tough time you know, with the election contest in their district, we'll give them the chance to vote for or against something that they know that those people are upset about, whatever. They, they, all those games go on. So who knows what was going on there? I mean, but this, this ought to be so, one of those kind of uh, seminal moments, if you will, that, that ought to be so cut and dry and so simple. Hey, you know what? Guess what? I don't want a camera in my house with some guy, some pervert watching my wife and kid. It's That's really right. that simple. Absolutely, yeah. And if people don't understand, hey, 229 of our reps ostensibly think this is okay for whatever reason, whether they're paid off, whether they're just dumb, whether they're crooked, whatever the case is, we got a big problem. Right. Season. And yeah. that's what that that's really. And if we can't get that straight, we're none of this other stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, sure. Yes, but people don't realize, Andy, that you know the the, the purpose of 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 the police force and the military is to protect the people. But really, what they've turned to be is they tur- turn to they've they've converted that from protecting the people to protecting the haves from the have-nots. In other words, protecting those people, you know, the government people, you know, all these big shots from all of us. They have converted, yeah, they have their own private army, and their private army includes the police departments, it includes the... the, um, uh, the the mili- all facets of the military, and uh, and everything else is is just smokescreen. They know what they're doing. These guys. And when people say, "Oh, Bernanke doesn't understand the gold standard," he understands he the gold standard. Let's he let's be knows. honest about it, right? Now, in order to be in that position, you know, you have to be a professional liar, right? So you got to be. It's a requirement of the job. <laughs> so when you yep. vote, you're voting for a professional liar. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna tell you quick, and then I'll I'll, I'll let you get back to your stuff here. Uh, I got an email from a two cent reader in, in Australia, yeah. and you know what their, their policy is towards uh, you know self protection down there. Basically, uh, you don't have any rights to that. Right. Uh, this this individual told me, he said, "Look, you know, I don't know if you guys all up there understand this. You're the last hope for the world." Oh, okay. there's, this, there's no hope left, Andy. Yeah, this is the last uh, area, major country where people still have the right to defend themselves and have the right to. Firearms. Right. I know we've been all over the place with this discussion, yeah, but right. said, if you guys if you guys lay them down yeah. and give them up, we're done. Yeah. Andy, I, I, we got to go. go all right, Andy. Andy, I'm sorry I got to shut you off because we really got to go now, okay? Thank you so much for calling. I'll be talking to you again. Right. Call in again. Thank you. Right, bye. You know, uh, I, I heard that also that most people agree with the government position that Snowden is a traitor and he should be tried. And let me take the position that the Judge Napolitano takes and that he is an American hero. Now, I know that doesn't sit well with many of you neocons, but I'm, I'm going to ask you to start waking up, to stop believing and start thinking. You see, and, and I'm, I'm repeating, Judge Napolitano, I wish I was this smart. I would say this is my own thought, but I'm going to, believe, to repeat it because I... I understand it. You see, when he took that job, he took that job to and promised and swore that he would uh, uh, keep everything confidential, blah, 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 blah. But he also took an oath to uphold the Constitution. Now, when one is in conflict with the other, the higher order always takes precedence. So what he did is he did what a red-blooded American should do. He upheld the Constitution. Amen. Because 
what he was being asked to do was illegal and unconstitutional. You can't do both, right? And And more. And more. So those people who say Snowden should be tried should read the Constitution. He's a patriot. You understand? This guy is this guy is our hero. And it is a, an abominable a shame that he goes to Russia and Russia and to, to a seek asylum. Now, when did you ever hear that? Why why aren't we on the on on M, N, MSNBC and on um, uh, Fox News and all those other uh, uh, stations. Why aren't they saying, well, here's an American hero? No, they just more mind control. They're spurting more of the garbage out to make you feel like, oh, yes, this guy is really terrible and something should be done. He's a hero and he is taking asylum in Russia. That should teach you something. Have you noticed they don't say anything about the stuff he's exposed? I mean, if the people knew what he's really exposing, it's not just they're listening to you, but what they're doing with Absolutely, the information. Absolutely, yeah. He's saying that what, they, what it boils down to is that he's, what he is being asked to keep is, is, unconst- is what the government is doing illegally and unconstitutionally. And he's saying, hey, no, you can't do this. I took an oath to uphold the Constitution, and that takes precedence over everything else. And he's absolutely correct. Now, I'd like people to, wait, we don't have much time. 855-866-1170. You know, we haven't asked anyone to call in at all. Isn't that terrible? 855-866-1170. We can take one or two calls possibly if we have time. 855-866-1170. Please call, and if you disagree, call anyway. I'd like to hear from you. All right? You know, we can see the way where America is going. I mean, just very simple. Just look back and see where we're going, and we're sinking. And this this news about the economy is slowly um, uh, reviving itself and improving is is hogwash because it's all being propped up by debt. And there is not one country in the world in 4,000 years of history that has ever propped itself up on debt. It has only created, uh, only created on debt. And right now, we are over $17 trillion worth of current debt, and unfunded debt is well over $230 trillion. It could never be paid. Never. And, Joe, and the people themselves are in total debt. They start them out in college totally in debt. Everyone 50, is in debt, yeah. 50, 60, 80, $100,000 worth of debt before you ever make your first dollar out of college. We're crazy. The we debt have, indebtedness society. We have. We're, we're just sunk. A- absolutely. Uh, hold on. We do have a caller. Here we go. Let's see. Who was that? Hello? Hello. Caller, you're on the air. Thank you for calling Liberty Talk Radio on 1170 KFAQ. Your first name and where you're calling from, please. My name's Junia. Junia. And I'm calling from, from Tulsa. Yes, dear. And I just wanted to point out the fact that if we treat this Mr. Snowden, so like a criminal, how's that going to affect future knowledge coming out from other whistleblowers? They're not going to want to do anything. Ah, uh, ex- uh, Junior, excellent beautiful, point. A- a- excellent point. That once we saw the president, no matter who says anything about, you know, it says, says They're anything traitors. They're about traitors. anything, yeah. you're a traitor. Right. Now everyone's going to be a traitor. I'm a traitor because I'm speaking uh, negatively about They're the government. Dissonant. Very, very right. good. That's an excellent point. Uh, well, it, and, and you're a woman, and it took a woman to, to, to make that point. You know, I guys you couldn't so. take it. Oh, thank you so I, much. Okay. Do you have Bye-bye. a t- do you, uh, Junior? Do you have a, a T-shirt? Um, no, I don't have a computer, so I can't go online. Oh, that's okay. Uh, Jim, will you take care of that? Give her a mic. I'll be happy to. I'll yeah. put her on hold and get her address and everything. Yeah. Okay, we'll get your address and all that stuff, and uh, okay. we'll, we'll send you one in the mail. Don't forget to give them your 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 T-shirt size. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, hon. Bye bye. Hey, that's that's terrific. Well, we we got one caller in. Do we run any other calls? 855-866-1170. Well, Junior, uh, J- Junior hung up. Sorry. Oh, she did. Oh. <laughs> she, we disconnected the poor gal. 855-866-1170. We okay on that? Let's see. We have oh we have three minutes. No, I was giving you three minutes. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I thought you were on line on line three. You know, if we see, just just think of things. You know, Detroit, for example, used to be the fourth largest city. Now it's the eighteenth largest city. It to- totally ruined, totally ruined. 
and and social everyone, engineered. Yeah, and to death. It, it, social in engineered there, to it, death. Is this? It's totally. You know, it's bankrupt and all that. You know, why we can't see this coming? We can't see this rot all over the United States. Now we, there are cities that are developing those high tech cities, but they can't save us. I mean, you can only have so many high tech cities, and that's about it. Well, you know, and high tech cities don't produce anything. Basically, California is headed down the same road as. That's right. The one city of Detroit is. Now, you take, uh, that's across the whole state of California is in terrible trouble. And here's another statistic, which I found. 50 of the top companies own 40% of, any, uh, of everything. 50 top companies own 40% of everything. Uh, and you know each one of these com- com- companies are in the pockets, you know, with uh, collusion with all the um, politicians and all this Under and to get legislation etc uh it's stacked against us you can't you can't beat that and you beat you believe any of these guys saying anything you're really getting fooled you're, you're getting sucked right in and uh, you know joe have you seen the uh show the netflix production called house of cards no oh joe you gotta watch it the house of cards it shows the behind the scenes washington it's cancerous it's horrible What's going on? And it's a it's it's a drama, but it tells the truth about what's going on. Mm. Well, uh, got to check that out. It's on Netflix. You can watch it. You know, and and if we, you know, if you believe your politicians, you believe that the uh, I, I, Vietnam, you know, was uh, necessary, uh, and and of course Iraq was necessary, uh, and everything, you know, and then They're you all realize, false flag yeah, and wars, then you realize every that everything that has occurred has some underlying motive, and that includes 9/11 includes everything that's going on. And that's why everything seems to be confusing, and I don't understand why those politicians do this, and they're so stupid in Washington. These people know what they're doing. No, so they're, they're they not know stupid. They're they they're know stupid. exactly. They're taken from us, and they're running us roughshod is what they're doing. Hey, folks, uh, this is the end of tonight's program. We want to thank you for listening in, and we want to thank our sponsors. Uh, you can, um, let's see, um, You can further the cause of liberty, actually, by uh, recommending this program to your friends. And let us hear from you. Our email address is comments at libertytalkradio.com. Thank you very much for listening in.